Okay, this is going to be a demo of how you can start uh, putting water through a pipe network. Uh, I'm going to start by uh, beginning a new project here. And I don't need to track changes. Remember, the first thing that you always check is let's make sure that the units are in SI. And the units are in SI. And then the other thing I want to be sure and do is um, be sure to change it from Hayes and Williams and put it in Darcy Wiesbach instead because Darcy Wiesbach is the more sophisticated and accurate way of measuring pipe friction. Uh, I'm going to have a layout that's similar to what I demonstrated in class. On one end, I'm going to have a reservoir. On the other, it just terminates in a single junction. Um, I'll put an elevation in that reservoir. Let's say that I have the water elevation is at 50 meters and then I'll just leave it at zero meters for the junction. Let me annotate for the junction the pressure so that we can observe that change once the water starts to flow. Uh, so I'm going to select pressure from the drop-down box and P equals, uh, let's have this Y offset be minus two and the X offset be two. Let's see where that ends up. Okay, that's fine. If I compute, we see that we have 489 kilopascals, and that's what you'd get for the uh, using the hydrostatic equation if the reservoir is at 50 meters and the junction is at zero and there's no head loss through the pipe. There's no friction in the pipe if there's no water flowing through it, so there wouldn't be any pressure decrease due to pipe friction. But when water starts to flow through this pipe, the pressure should go down. And the way that we can say that water is flowing through the pipe is open up the junction table and inside the junction there's a column heading called demand collection and that's where you're specifying how much water is flowing out of that junction and so if I say that 10 liters per second is going out of the junction then the system will automatically assume that it's coming from the reservoir and it's gonna go through the pipe to get to the junction okay so now let me specify that the demand through there is 10 liters per second now it hasn't changed the pressure yet because I need to recompute again. And once I do, you'll notice the pressure is a little bit lower. Well, why didn't it go down more? Well, that also depends on the pipe diameter. So if I open up the uh, pipe diameter table, before, if I would have changed the pipe diameter when there was no water flowing through the pipe, it wouldn't have any effect on the pressure. But if I change this from 150 millimeters down to 50 millimeters, then that reduction in diameter is also going to decrease the pressure. It went down a lot. So let me put it back to 152, which is what it was at just moments ago. I'll have it recompute. Okay, so I'm back up to 488. So if I changed it from 10 liters per second, now if I change it to 50 liters per second and I calculate, you can see that increasing the, pre increasing the demand out of that junction is going to have an effect on the pressure at that junction. So very briefly, just to re-emphasize, the way that you get to where you can enter the flow rate, once you've drawn your network, you just go into the flex table, open up the junction, and it's this demand collection is the spot where you click on it, and then it gives you a location to say how much demand is coming out of junction one.